so in i've seen a few comments on how to make this um left-handed can it be worn left-handed the answer is yes you just need to do the outer construction the opposite way but it also means cutting the pieces the opposite way so i've got my outer here oh, hang on. mine's all screwed up i've got my two pieces here now i cut them with the pieces the fabric from reverse to get them the opposite way so where it says fabric right way up you'll cut it wrong way up so you'll have your pieces the wrong way around to what they should be and the same with the outer oh, sorry the back piece it's the opposite way because I cut it from the wrong side those are the only two pieces that you need to worry about cutting differently only two the lining it still needs the zipper to go at the short side so don't worry about any of that it's just these two pieces need to be cut opposite way so i'll put that back one out of the way for a minute and we're just going to concentrate on the front so I've got my upper, my lining, and I've got my two pocket pieces. The one is shorter than the other. It's because the outer one has an accent strip on it. I've got an accent strip for the top as well. So make sure you've got all your pieces. Let's pop those out of the way for a second. want to do the lining first so I like to use um, a cutting mat to measure mine but you can measure a mark do whatever's easiest first off grab some pins mine were hiding and you want to measure in from the short side four inches this is exactly the same as in the pattern. But rather than say, watch the other bit for 10 minutes, then come here. Let's just do the whole of the outer. So, four inches, four inches there, four there, and four there. This is going to be our fold line fold lines I should say so on the left I'm going to at the pins or your marks fold the fabric back on itself so I flip it over make sure the edges match up so you know it's not wonky and then give it a press and do the same with this side so bring that was your right side there Fold it back on itself. And press both sides. Giving it all a good steamy press to keep the folds. Now I need to top stitch down both sides to keep the folds in place don't worry about having to unfold it because as you see the edges don't meet the ends so nothing will get caught yeah i've top stitched them in place let me just bring my mat back <coughs> And I'm going to unfold it all. Now this time I'm going to measure in again, but only two inches.
we go two inches in from the short sides and I start with the left I'm bringing this folded edge to meet the markers so I've used pins but if you've used um, a fabric marker bring it in to meet those markers I've not actually pinned through both fabrics. How if I did? Right, pin the fold in place or clip the fold in place. Whichever works for you. And then you're going to give it a good press now to keep all of those folds. So I've given it all a good press and I would just need to baste stitch just along the tops for the folds within the seam allowance to hold them there while we construct everything. There we go. I've baste stitched it in place. I need to do it oh, wrong piece. I need to do exactly the same with the lining. So measure in four inches, hold it back, top stitch, then measure in two inches and bring your folds to the marker. Now I'm going to change my thread for this, so I'll cut back once I've done it. There we go, so I've done the lining exactly the same as the outer. So I'm just going to put the lining aside and take one of my accent strips. So the black is the right side and this um, greyish colour is the wrong side. Make sure your pocket is the right way up if you've used a directional fabric. And take one of your accent strips and flip it over right side to your pocket. You might find that, depending on how you've done your pleats, how thick your fabric is, you might find your pocket is a bit bigger than your accent strip. If it is, don't worry, just centre your strip on the top of the pocket. I'm going to match up the long raw edges together and I'm going to sew them together across the top using a regular seam allowance. So, stitch together. Now with all the seam allowance facing upwards, I'm just going to flip this accent strip upwards as well. So seams upwards, accent strip up upwards. If you've used in cotton or linen, you could give it a good press to keep it in place. Otherwise, you might be able to press it with your fingers. You could use tape if your machine lets you use tape. Mine doesn't. So I'm just going to hold it and top stitch it. There we go. I've top stitched it in place. Now here's where we come to our first difference from the pattern. So with the pull on, oh, hang on. on the right this time, I want my overhang being on the right side. 
So with the other pattern to do, it's on the left. This is going to be on the right. What I want to do first is I want to make sure my pull doesn't come off. So I'm going to run a few stitches just along both ends. I actually only needed it on that end, but it's just to make sure the pull doesn't come off. Close your zip as far as it will go. The only reason we've got this overhang is because I don't like having to keep moving the zip all the time. I just find it neater if you can just sew a straight line without having to move anything around. So again, zip is fully shut. The pull is on the right. Match up your left closed end of the zipper with the left side of your accent tape. So flip the zipper so it's facing downwards. Batch it up really nicely with the end. And clip them together. So this is where, if you're following the pattern as well, which obviously you need to, this is our first difference. So I'm going to base stitch these together now, all the way across. There we go, it just makes it easier if it's base stitch, so you know nothing moves. Right. Now take your pleated lining piece. If it's directional, make sure it's right way up. And I'm going to flip it so it's right side to what we've just sewn. Match up the top edge with the edge of your zipper tape and the edge of the accent strip. And clip them together. I've matched my pocket up with my outer pocket so that I know it's all going to be even and equal. Now this time I'm going to sew them together using a regular seam allowance. If you're using a number three zipper, use a quarter inch seam allowance. Right, stitch together, unfold them. If you wish, you can press the lining away from the zip. But you need to match these up now so they are wrong sides together. And top stitch down the... Hard to see, I used a black zip and a black vinyl. The top stitch across the top of your accent strip to keep the fold in place. There we go. I've top stitched the pieces downwards. I'm going to pop this to the side a second while I do the top. The outer front upper. I've got my accent strip again and I'm going to flip it so it's right side to the bottom of your outer front upper piece. Match the edges, sew them together using regular seam allowance. I was really lazy then and I didn't clip it. <laughs> Normally I don't clip anything. Unless it's in like a huge piece. So same as we did with the lower. With the seams facing down. 
I'm going to fold this downwards. Press it if you can. Finger press it, mash it if you can. Otherwise, you're just going to have to hold it whilst you top stitch. There we go. So, this is where your next difference is from the pattern. So, when I fold this down so that they're right sides together, this is now the opposite way to what's on your pattern. So in the pattern, the curve goes down this way. We're still constructing it exactly the same. Top edge, the long edge of your accent strip, matches up with the edge of your zipper tape. I will clip them this time because the tape likes to jiggle about and sew them together with a basting stitch. Right. This is another reason why I get all my pieces on the table because this is very easy to forget. And without it, you won't have a usable pocket. So make sure it's the right way up. So these edges are longer than your short sides. So it's slightly wider than it is tall. If it has a direction, make sure it's the right way up. Then take everything you've just sewn and place it on top. If your lining is the wrong way around, you'll notice that it won't fit nicely. But I'm matching up the long edges together. And I'm going to sew across the top now using a regular seam allowance. So count them, you've got four layers. Four layers. If you've got three, one's missing. We had a couple of oopsies in the testing. So I'm just taking this top piece only and I'm pushing it upwards. All of my seams are facing upwards as well, all my seam allowances. And as we did before, I'm going to top stitch it in place. If your fabric allows, you can press it first. There we go. So on the bottom, and two, three pieces, and just the one at the top. I'm leaving this little zippy bit sticking out for a minute. But I'm going to take my pattern piece and I'm going to lay it on top of the panel, matching up the curves. You will see mine has gone a bit skewer at the bottom. I've got a little bit of excess. Don't worry, don't worry about it. All you need to do is just trim off the excess don't trim off the zip. Leave the zip alone. It's fine there. But trim off all the excess, all these bits around it. So I used my pattern piece and I trimmed off the excess. Now what I need to do is I'm going to just base stitch all these bottom pocket pieces together. If you wish, you can baste up the sides as well. So as choice, up to you. I'm just going to base the bottoms for now. Radio. So, at the minute we're looking opposite to the pattern, but we've constructed it the same way. Now continuing with our opposite theme, take your short side piece, flip it over, and right sides together you're going to match one of the long edges to the short 
side of your front panel. Now I'm just going to pop a few clips in the top. View up from the bottom. And when I'm happy nothing's moving anywhere, I'm going to move the zip over. Do move the zip, otherwise, after all your effort. Oh dear. You're going to be able to open your pocket. Or I should have said, check that your pocket, you've got your pieces, double, triple check. If you can see the desk, you're missing a piece. But, whoa, don't go off. Whew. Nearly pulled my zip off there. Open it halfway. It's nice and safe there. So, clipped it together, I'm gonna sew it together, now using, a regular seam allowance. Now I can snip off the excess of my zip now. I'm not going to snip it all off. Just a big chunk. Now if your fabric allows it, press this side piece over all the seams need to be facing towards the side piece press it over if you are using fabric like mine or cork you can top stitch it in place you can use double sided tape whatever you feel like doing i'm going to top stitch We go I've top stitched it in place now find my tall side and again we're working opposite ways here so right sides together matching one of the long edges to the long side of your front panel I've got a curve in mine annoying I'm just going to clip them together. I've had to flip my round because I'm right handed and I can't clip that way. There we go. Same again. Seam allowance. Press it open with all the seam allowances facing to the side. If you can't press it, top stitch it. There we go, so pressed it over, if you can't press it, top stitch in place. And then our final piece is our back piece, so again working opposite to the picture. All the pieces match up, so there, is, there isn't a real way to get it wrong. But we want to save the short side for last, because when we stitch in the tunnel, you want to be sewing the, the shortest time. So we do all the long pieces now. There we go. So I'm going to sew them together using a seam allowance. Pull this piece over but I'm going to flip my seams allowances so they face the 
tall side and then top stitch them in place because I can't press them. There we go. So all the seams are facing towards the side pieces. Everything else now you can construct the same. So carry on now with step 25. If you go over to video one, find this part and you can carry on watching. It's all the same. Now, when you get to the lining, obviously I've done a left-handed zip here now. So if you're left-handed, you tend to open it the other way. If you're going to do your lining zipper with the pull on the right, then when it comes to step 56, use the slip pocket first. So sew the slip pocket for step 56, not the zipper pocket. And that way, your zips will all face the same way. If you're not worried, then just carry on with the pattern as it is. But if you want a left-handed zipper on the inside, step 56... Obviously, after you've sewn your zipper pocket with the pull on the right, step 56, sew your slip pocket first. You'll see in the pattern what I mean. But anyway, that is how we do it the opposite way. Any questions, ask me below. Come over to the group. Ask me there. Feel free. Or even email me if you've bought the pattern. My email is in there. I don't give it out in the comments, obvious reasons. But there we are. This is how you make it for left-handed users. Hope this was helpful for you. I really do.